Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are talking about the Urban Decay Backtop Palette. So I did a full demo of using it on my eyes and on my cheeks so that you guys could see how they actually perform. Um, and then I went through all of the shades, did swatching, um, and did my full reviews at full review at the very end. So I will put a timestamp in the description box in case you don't really care about watching me put it all over my face and you just want my full review. I'll leave that timestamp down below so you can skip on ahead to it. But otherwise, if you want to see my review thoughts and demo on the new Urban Decay Backtalk palette, then just keep watching. Okay, so I wanted this video to be just about this palette, so I went ahead and did my foundation, concealer, and eyebrows so that we could just get that out of the way and not really fuss with it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I also primed my eyes using the Urban Decay Primer Potion, and then I just set it with the loose powder. So we are ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to take this Luxie 249 double ended brush and I'm going to take the fluffy side here and I'm going to take the shade Backtalk, which is right here, pretty much the main reason that this palette was made. And I'm going to pile that on my brush and I'm going to work that into my crease. Okay, so next I'm going to take the shade WTF, which is right here, on the same brush. And I'm going to put that in the outer corner and a little bit into the crease. Okay, and then for the lid, I'm going to take the shade Bare, which is right here, the first shimmer shade. Um, I have not actually tried these yet, so I'm going to go in dry first just to see what kind of pigment I can get, and then we'll go in wet if necessary. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's doing nothing, so let me on with the setting spray and build that up a little bit because that just looks totally matte. And still nothing. Okay, let me try the other one. The one next to it is called Curve. Maybe that one will be better? Maybe? Okay, so that one's a little bit better, but it's not wowing me. I mean, what? Okay. This is not working. Um, let me try one of the face highlighters. So, I'm going to go in with the other side. Um, the shade Party Foul. I'm going to go in with that one and see if... I'm going to use my finger this time, I suppose. There we go. Okay. Face highlighter to the win. That's really pretty. Okay. I'm just going to move on because I'm obviously not going to make this work the way I want it to. Okay, so for the bottom lash line, I'm just going to take my normal e.l.f crease brush and I'm going to take the shades Backtalk and WTF um, mix them together and smudge it on the bottom lash line. Okay so now we're going to jump to the base side of this palette. Um, I'm going to use the blushes and highlighters. So we've got two highlighters, two blushes. That's what the blushes look like. You've got like a very very purple one and then a very pink one. Um, obviously you could use these as eyeshadows. They would work just as well as the regular eyeshadows if you wanted to kind of add those in get a little bit of a different look you definitely could and then there's the face highlighter 
So you've got a very peach one, which is this one, and then a more pinky one, which is that one. So I'm going to first go in with the shade Double Take. This one right here for my blush. It's the pinky option. One thing to note about these blushes, they are very powdery and soft and very pigmented. But don't be intimidated by them because they do actually blend out very nicely. And then for my highlight, I'm going to take the shade Party Foul, which is the pinky champagne -y type color. And I'm going to take this tapered highlighting brush. I don't actually know what brand this is. It says on the ferrule, but I can't read it, so I don't know. It's just a tapered highlighting brush. There's nothing special about it. haven't used these yet. Those are real dusty. Okay. Oh, okay. So I got too much of my brush and then I tapped it off and all of it came off. So, cool. Really expected this to be more intense. Okay, so you can build it up. Um, it is majorly emphasizing texture, like texture that you can't even see on my skin is being brought out. That's intense. Okay. You really do have to build it up though. Like I've used two or three dips into the pan for each side now. And it's still looking very not intense. It's not natural, but it's not bam highlight that I usually go for. I'm going to try and add on this little bit of the peachy one called Low Key. Okay, so that one is actually a lot tougher than the champagne one. The champagne one, I like twirled my brush in it and it just flew powder everywhere. This one is not doing that. It's a lot harder. And still not really pigmented so okay so this is the final look in case you're wondering I went in for my lips with the Urban Decay Back Talk Comfort Matte Lipstick which is of course their like original inspiration behind this palette which honestly I don't really understand <laughs> because I mean I guess some of these shades kind of work but like the Back Talk eyeshadow in this palette is like super kind of like mauve and pretty that's a bad word for it it's just very mauve and the lipstick is very pink so I don't really understand that part but whatever okay so now that we have put all of this on my face I'm going to go through and kind of talk about my final thoughts of this palette so, let's jump into that, shall we? So, first of all, this packa packaging is so gorgeous. It's this beautiful matte, mauve pinky thing. It says Back Talk on it. It's actually like doubled, so it's like Back Talk and Back Talk. Um, it's very, very thick. So, if space is an issue for you, this is probably not the palette you're going to want to go for because this is a very thick long palette so keep that in mind so when you open it up you see the two sides with the removable mirror sitting in the middle so you actually slide it into place like this and you close it up now the one thing about this there is a right way and a wrong way to put this mirror in which kind of annoys me because I don't know it annoys me what the what the what See, it really is annoying. I've Every time I take it out, I put it in wrong, which drives me crazy. I do kind of get annoyed because if I just wanted to do eyeshadow, I can't just open it up to the eyeshadow and just like leave it like this. Um, the, the, the way it's designed, the, the mirror automatically pulls out when you lay it flat, which I kind of wish they had made it removable just 
for ease sake because you have to take it out if you want to just like lay it flat but that's kind of a that's me being petty so okay now getting to the shades of this so when I first saw this come out or when I first saw like the teaser pictures and everything as soon as I saw it I said yep yep that's gonna be mine I don't even need to question it right I kind of wish I had because I didn't even look at the swatches I didn't look at the information for it so I didn't realize there's only three matte eyeshadows in this palette which you know wouldn't be such a problem for most people I suppose but I don't do shimmer shades on my lids that often it's not my favorite look um, for an everyday kind of eyeshadow look I go for all matte so for that I can really only get one look out of this which is kind of annoying um, so the three mattes that you have in here are a matte cream the shade backtalk which is like a pinky mauve and the shade WTF which is like a orangey brown um, my other complaint about this is the brown that they chose I feel like I, I wish they had gone for more of a deep like chocolatey brown rather than this like warm terracotta brown because on the eyes blended out the shade the WTF shade the brown and the back talk shade look pretty much identical you can't really discern a difference on them once they're like blended into the eye so I can't really get that much depth out of it which makes it pretty much useless to me because I like to do like a neutral color in the crease a nice chocolate brown on the uh, outer corner and then a cream shade on the lid that's what I like so this palette doesn't really make that possible for me because the two colored matte shades look pretty much identical once they're blended out on your eye which is kind of annoying one thing to note about these eyeshadows is that they are not very soft these are the type of eyeshadows that can really take a beating which with my very limited experience with urban decay eyeshadows seems pretty on par with them they're not usually very like powdery fallouty type of shades which i appreciate because i'm kind of vicious with my palettes i like to go in and like dig into them with a the brush um, so I like the fact that they do help hold up well for that um, but it also means that you're gonna have to work harder to build up the shade on the eye it took me about three tries to get this WTF shade to be dark enough to do something on my outer corner to not look exactly sa the same as the back talk shade in my crease now these shivers I had actually not tried these shimmers before I did this video so I was kind of caught off guard when they were this bad in this palette you have five shimmer shades um, so here they are right there honestly these look really similar to me especially the first two bare and curved which are the two that I tried on my eyelid first they look almost identical I don't know what the difference is I could not tell you the difference I don't understand why they felt the need to put two champagne -y pink shimmers right next to each other in the same palette like this is I see no difference so that's kind of a fail um, the other two shade and attitude which are the purple and the pink right here uh, those are gorgeous. They are much much more pigmented than the first two and They're really nice and I feel like I could definitely get a nice payoff and a specific type of look with them now the last shade 180 This is really annoying because this is the brown that I wish they had made WTF as I You could technically use this in your outer corner you could it's dark enough it's pigmented enough for it however it does have a satin shift to it so it's 
probably going to show that off once the sun hits it and it starts getting all shiny you're probably going to be able to tell that you do have a satiny type shade in your outer corner in the pan it looks a lot more like a shimmer but it really is just like a satin so it would work well in the outer corner i just wish they had done something different overall i just wish this palette had been a little a little better thought out because i feel like it just wasn't um i already swatched the blushes and highlighters but i'll go ahead and talk about them um, so you've got the two blushes which are Cheap Shot and Double Take. One is very purple, one is very peach. Those are really nice. They're very powdery um, and they're very pigmented, but they blend out easily on the face. So it all works out well for me. Um, the two highlighters, you've got Low Key and Party Foul. So one is very peach, one is very champagne-y. It's honestly exactly the same as Bare and Curve. In the eyeshadow portion um, it's just that champagne with a hint of pink to it though so this one was much more pigmented I actually used this on my lid and it worked out well so I don't know why they felt the need to put three champagne shades in the same palette but that's okay um, the two highlighter shades are completely different formulas which kind of blew me away but basically when you go in to like swirl your brush in this it just like flies powder everywhere and you get a shit ton on your brush like a massive amount on your brush but then you tap it off and it all disappears and you have no pigment to put on your face so that was an interesting experience low-key is very different it's a much more stiff packed together highlighter um which basically means that you get no payoff for it I swirled my brush in this about four times. There was no powder that went anywhere, but there was also no pigment on my face when I went to put it down. So they're both, they both have issues in their own separate ways. <sighs> so all in all, this palette costs, what was it, $46? I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it was well thought out. I don't think that they put enough time into this. I feel like the formula is all over the place. Some of them are really nice and pigmented. Some of them are dusty. Some of them are blendable. Some of them have no color payoff. The, the color choices in general are kind of annoying. The fact that there's only three mattes in here. What? Who puts three mattes in an eyeshadow palette? I don't understand that. Now granted, you could use 180 as a matte in your outer corner. But it does have a satin shift to it, so you're going to be able to see that it's not a matte. So I'm not counting that one. I was so excited to get this palette. And now my heart is broken. Absolutely broken. I just... I was really, really let down by this palette. So, in all, I would say don't buy this. I don't think it's worth it. It's absolutely beautiful, but... In theory and only in theory in person trying to use it it's just a no it's a no for me it really is okay so there is my full demo review thoughts and whatnot on the new Urban Decay Backpack palette I hope you guys liked this video I hope you found it informative please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you next one